Um, what I want to tackle next is actually this uh, engine coolant temperature sensor issue, and here's why. Because um, there's two reasons. Let me show you one complication with my O2 sensor codes here. So this is my concern. This is the Bank 1 Oxygen Sensor 1, and it is brand new. I mean, you can see how white this area is here, despite my terrible camera work. That is absolutely brand new. Clearly, this was changed by the vehicle owner before the sale, maybe as a result of some of the check engine light problems. With that being brand new like that, um, I'm a little worried that what may have happened is that those codes may not have been cleared after changing this oxygen sensor. So, um, not quite sure how I'm going to approach that yet. So, here's my thinking. Um, I'm going to go after this uh, ECT, the uh, engine coolant temperature sensor, next. And the reason is because, uh, despite what I said earlier about how usually codes will exclude other codes, I can see a scenario where a problem with the ECT could possibly cause some codes to show on the oxygen sensor, but what I cannot see is where codes on the oxygen sensor could possibly cause an ECT code. So I'm going to go to the source of it, especially considering two things, the new oxygen sensor and also, um, I'll show you in a little bit here, but the waveform for the oxygen sensor looks excellent. The, the oxygen sensor is clearly working. Um, the other thing too is that uh, if you remember in the previous video if you saw it, I noticed that the engine was one, running rich. Now we don't have a rich code um, for this engine but we do know from the long-term fuel trim so let me go ahead and show you that data and then I'll explain why I think that's linked to this ECT problem. What my thinking is, is if there's an intermittent with the coolant temperature sensor, by the way, there's two of them on this vehicle. Um, I, I don't usually do foreign cars because my scan tool doesn't seem to like them very much. But I, I do know on these Toyotas, they have two temperature sensors. One of them is going to be near the top of the engine, and it's going to be the one that feeds the temperature gauge. And it does seem that that's working fine. The car's not um, overheating or anything. But there's another one um, below, I think, near the radiator that... Um, basically turns the fans on and off. And uh, we didn't have any overheat condition, but also it was a really warm day when we were test driving the vehicle, so we were running the air conditioner. When you run the air conditioner, the fans always run anyway, so maybe we would have noticed uh, the fans not coming on and the engine getting much warmer had we not had the air conditioner on. Um, so good, good diagnosis for the fans. If you diagnose a fan problem and you're not sure if the motors are blown out or anything, um, turn on the air conditioner. The fans should come on, but um, that may come into play here. Here. But again, my thinking is if the engine coolant temperature sensor is intermittently not reading and the circuit is, I don't know whether it will be open or closed, but until the engine warms up, I think the circuit is uh, open and then when the engine heats up, the circuit closes. If it's re showing an open circuit because there's some electrical problem, even though the engine's warmed up, then it's going to think that the engine is cool. And what that's going to do, if it thinks the engine is cold, it's going to make the engine run rich because you always need more fuel on a cold engine to make it run better at startup and things like that. So um, that happening plus the weird combination that the engine's warm and the oxygen sensors are warmed up and working, I can see where you might get some funky oxygen sensor um, codes if it doesn't realize the engine's warmed up. Maybe I'm wrong about that, but that's kind of what I'm going with. But uh, let's go ahead and inspect uh, both of the coolant temperature sensors and see if we can find any evidence of a problem. And uh, one of the ways I'm going to do that is uh, hook up the scan tool and see if I can find, maybe if I wiggle some connections around or something, if I can get the temperature to change. Uh, that'll probably only work for the uh, sensor on the top of the engine for the one on the bottom of the engine that controls the fans. Um, I'm, I'm not sure that that's going to show up on my scan tool. I don't think I have that accessibility. So here's the data that I got while idling the car for a little while. Um, up here we've got our Bank 1 oxygen sensor. You can see that the oscillations uh, look to be pretty good and I did a few things um, a little bit over here to um, try to 
test and see if there's some quick response and stuff. And the oxygen sensor seems fine. It does look like it's running a little bit on the rich side up here. But also we can see down here on the long-term fuel trim, again, the negative number indicating that the computer is trying to subtract addition of fuel from the system because it detects that it's already running too rich. And constantly the car is running at about, usually to minus 20, it was a little better here, um, at about maybe minus 18 or so. But the car definitely running rich. We can see that the temperature, um, about 195. And uh, we did have the air conditioning running uh, during most of this. So uh, what I'm going to do now is go ahead and turn off the air conditioner. And if the fans don't come on, this is going to be a good indication that the uh, coolant temperature switch for the fans is not working. All right, so this is interesting. I've now um, run the engine for a while while getting some scan data. Again, our fuel trim is down here. It's again negative, um, almost negative 20, so still running pretty rich. Maybe not enough to set a code yet, but you know, I want this thing to be fixed. Um, but notice the engine temperature now. When we don't have the air conditioning running, I noticed that the fans never did come on and it uh, started getting a little bit toasty there. Um, I shut the engine off because I certainly didn't want to do any damage. We can see that our oxygen sensor does seem to be working properly here. So what this is telling me is that this is going to be a engine coolant temperature problem with the fan coolant temperature switch. And here's how I know that. Because the gauge in the dashboard, which is, I believe, run off the computer, I'm pretty sure about that at least, was also getting a little toasty too. So um, I don't know what computer controls are used for the coolant temperature fan switch. As far as I know, maybe it only turns the fans on or off. I don't know. I don't have a wiring diagram for this car. But uh, I do want those fans to come on. And we'll see if I fix this problem if maybe I can fix the long-term fuel trim problem too uh, because clearly what's happening is it's not realizing that the, um, that the car is warmed up. It thinks the car is cold. So I believe that uh, fixing this will hopefully then get the computer to realize that the car is warm and that the fuel trim needs to be adjusted accordingly. So let's see if we can find the problem with that coolant temperature switch and see what happens. All right, so I'm under the car, and uh, this right here is obviously the coolant temperature switch for the fan, because when I unplug it, by default, it should turn the fan on, and you can probably hear the fan, and when I plug it back in, the fans go off again. Now, the problem is, right now, the car is about 205 degrees, so the fans should be running, so what clearly is happening is this switch is clearly in a position, it's stuck in a position that makes it as if the coolant is cold. And I'm not sure whether that's a stuck, stuck open or stuck closed position at this time, but this is really making me think that this sensor is bad. Hello and welcome to Gourmet Cooking. No, actually, um, what we're going to do is an experiment here because I want to prove that this is a bad coolant temperature sensor. And what I've got here is a known good coolant temperature sensor, also from a Camry, from a different one. And we're going to get this little pot of boiling water here. And what I'm going to do is take my known good sensor, and I'm going to hook up my multimeter to it. And we are going to dip it into the hot water and see how it behaves. And then we will see if our questionable sensor uh, behaves the same, in which case I'm going to no longer think that it is the problem, or more likely it is not going to react to the boiling water is my guess, in which case I know I've made the right diagnosis. All right, so I'm going to hook up my leads into this good coolant temperature sensor, and we can see we've got a very, very high resistance there. So I'm going to go ahead and put this into the boiling water and my bet is it's going to start dropping pretty rapidly. And we see that it's dropping quite rapidly um, indicating that the circuit is closing and this is the uh, signal to turn on the fans. Now oh, that steam's kind of hot actually. So all right, now what I'm going to do is hook up the leads to my questionable sensor and You'll notice that I injured my thumb pulling the sensor out, so this sensor better be dead or I'm going to be really angry. There we go. 
And oh, well, check that out. We can see right off the bat that we're done here. Uh, there's no resistance in this circuit. This is a closed circuit. So what this means is this explains why the fans aren't coming on. Because this is stuck closed, it always makes the computer think, well, makes the fans, I suppose. I don't think it goes to the computer, but it makes the fans think that the coolant is cold. It is not making the connection for the fans. So with this bad sensor, indeed, the fans won't come on. And just to be safe, I'm going to go ahead and put it into the water here, um, just in case it's some kind of reverse system. But um, now it's not doing anything. So this is a stuck closed switch. We definitely need the new coolant temperature switch, no doubt about it. All right, so that takes care of our 0115 coolant temperature switch problem. But uh, the only problem is we didn't rule out, because I'm going to add something here. I'm going to write rich because it had no effect whatsoever on the long-term fuel trim showing a rich condition. And I'm not totally surprised by that. I was kind of hoping that that um, switch would have explained it. But that switch that was messed up, I don't believe has anything to do with the computer. Um, it turns out, actually, I found there's uh, three switches on this by accident. Uh, when I was playing around with the switch up top here, let me show you. So this switch here on the left, this greenish guy here, is actually clearly for the computer because unplugging that bottoms out the temperature on my scan tool. And on the right of it here, this white one, if you unplug that one, then the temp gauge in the instrument panel will zero out. So that's strictly for the dial in the instrument panel. And then, of course, there was the one at the bottom uh, that controls apparently only the fans. So there's three switches on this car. But um, anyway, back to where I was. So we got the three switches on the car. Uh, playing around with any of those three switches has no effect whatsoever on the fuel trim. So I'm confident that... Any coolant uh, temperature switch problems not going to affect the fuel trim, at least on this car. So I don't know what's causing this rich condition, but uh, we'll want to figure it out. So the only other thing is I did have to clear the codes to make sure that the CTS code didn't come back. Uh, what also never came back were my um, crankshaft position, or I'm sorry, camshaft position sensor code or either of the oxygen codes. Actually, the car's got no check engine light on it right now, so I may have to drive the car around a little bit, see if I get any of these codes to come back up. But before I do that, I want to try to figure out what's going on with this rich system. So I'm going to have to go through a typical diagnostic here. Now, the problem I have is I'm not going to be able to use my scan tool very much for this because my scan tool doesn't seem to talk with this car very well. So I can only really bring up like basic generic PIDs on it. So um, we may have to go old school on this one. Uh, the other thing that's complicated is I don't think there's a Schrader valve for the fuel uh, rail on this car either. So um, may have to do some figuring out on that.